What's that say? Mystery bag. Is that what men call what they put in their pants? Hmm, mystery bag. What's that going to be like? Hi, I'm Kate Blanchett and I'm here to teach you about Australian slang. Or, g'day, cobber. I'm here to talk to you about some Aussie lingo. Back of Burke or Back of Burke. Back of Burke is bum nowhere. Okay, brekkie. That's what we call breakfast. Dinky die. That means you're okay, cobber. Uh, ah, oh, piker. If you're a piker, it means you're not giving it a good Aussie go. Thingo. You know when you can't remember something when you've got early onset dementia like I do? You go, oh, where's that, um, where's that mobile thingo? It's a very, very useful word. What's that, shonky? Oh, I love the word. Shonky means something just is, is so badly made, like most of the films that I've been in, except for Tar. It's a good one. Go see it. Um, footy. Now, this is a really, really important word to know. This is true football. It's not soccer, which is also called football. It's not football. Or what you call American football. That's not a football. That's just like a a lemon that you just throw around and think, this is the real game of football, where people don't wear any pads, they, they run like the clappers at one another, kind of try to punch one another, jump in the air and catch the ball. That is footy. Love it. Okay, porky. Now, that's often what actresses are called. We're not porky. Porky is like a porky pie or a lie. Now, did you tell the porky? I use it to my kids a lot. No, don't tell porkies. Grundies? See, maybe this is um, depending on where you're from in Australia. You might call your undies Grundies or you might call them Bundies. I, I call them Bundies or Scungies, depending on how often you wash. Oh, hooroo! This is very, yeah, so hooroo! It's like bye bye. Like that one. Chewy. Now, this is not Chewbacca. Mm. Chewy is um, chewing gum. Because when you're chewing gum, it's really hard to say the word gum. So you go, chum, chewy. Defo, really great word. I usually spell it with two Fs because you go defo. It means that it's something is absolutely 100% correct. Like, um, how would you say? Are you coming out tonight, mate? You go, yeah, defo. Dunny, this is not a word that I like my children to use. We like to use loo. You don't say toilet in England because that is really, you just can really imagine what people are doing in there. If you say dunny, you can, yeah, well, I don't, probably don't need to say anymore. Actually, in the back streets of Melbourne, where I grew up, they used to have the, these outhouse loos. And I did a history of Melbourne when I was at, at a high school, which was really interesting. We got to walk the back streets. And the, the loo man, the dunny man, used to come along and, you know, before you had flushing toilets, used to take the can. And I read an account where it was um, uh, quite common for people to leave a Christmas present for the dunny man. You know, bottle of beer stuck into the dunny. Fair dinkum. You can imagine that. I mean, you've heard that one. That's one's a bit of a cliche. Two up. I mean, I mean, this is really, we're really going back in history. This is a game. There's a, in Australia, there's a saying that, you know, people will bet on anything, like two uh, flies climbing up, climbing up the wall. Which one's going to make it first, mate? Oh, I don't know. I reckon the one on the right. That's a big blowy. Two up is like a game you play with two pennies um, and you throw them up in the air and you say heads, two heads or two tails, and then you bet on how it's gonna land. Two up, two down. Bathers, that's your budgie smugglers, what you um, wear to go swimming in. That's probably quite obvious, isn't it? But it depends. If you're in New South Wales, you might say, hey, come on, we're going for a swim, bring your swimmers, which is your cosy. See, there's a few words, cosy, bathers, swimmers. Uh, mad as a cut snake. That's me. No, mad as a cut snake means you're completely off your rocker. You're insane, basically. But it's kind of said with affection. Oh, he's mad as a cut snake. Milk bar. Oh, look, this, it's been a great loss. The corner store, um, our equivalent of the corner store was a milk bar where, where you could get, you know, 20 cents of sweets. You'd buy your milk, you'd buy your bread. But yeah, now it's just a 7-Eleven. Um, oldies, that's your folks. That's your mum and dad which I guess is that's what I am now. Yep. Pash, oh my goodness, this is Kathy Lett, 
our, our national treasure, Kathy Lett, uh, author, introduced me to this word, pash. That's what we also call a tonguey. It's, it's when you really get in there with a big old schmooch that's, you know, often ends up in a love bite. It's like a, it's a really passionate kiss. Ripper. That, oh, you ripper, your beauty. It means that's a really, it's really fantastic. It's great. It's something that someone is, you know, they get their um, honorary doctor, doctorate degree or their doctorate in philosophy. You ripper, mate. You've got your doctorate in philosophy. Rort. Fraud, rort. Yeah. Basically what most major corporations in America are doing right now. I uh, hope you've learned something today. Um, when you eventually come to Australia and see what a wonderful country it is, you'll be able to speak the lingo. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.